Okay, so I opened up PhotoP, and I opened up uh, the last file I created, which, remember, we brought in a PNG that we saved from Vector after we'd saved our own uh, EPS file. But the problem with saving it as a PNG is we had to set a resolution. And whenever you have to set a resolution, that rasterizes it. It locks in the pixels. And so then we, when we brought it into PhotoP, you can see the, the pixel, the pixelation. And that's not a big deal, except that if we were to ever change the size of this, the edge quality would also change. So it would get worse and worse the bigger we tried, tried to make it. But it allows us to post online very clearly. And as long as we have saved that, that SVG version, that's a vector version, then as long as we had a software like Illustrator or like Photoshop, we could make that vector into anything we want, right? Because we could always output that SVG as something new. Now, what's interesting here, I'm just seeing this in PhotoP, is that you can download things as SVGs. But that doesn't mean that it is then a um, automatically a vector file. So it's it's complicated. SVGs are a little complicated. EPS are transferable vector files. So just like I did uh, earlier, last class, with this, I'm going to take the EPS that we created in Illustrator. which I still have on my desktop here. And I should probably move into my folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up that master folder. I'll mark it purple. <laughs> we have all these differences, right? So that EPS that I created in Illustrator, I am now going to bring that into Photoshop. So this is like bringing um, a PNG into PhotoP. Okay, now, in order to do that, and we've done something similar to this before, when we um, made our, which one was it? Our cartoon jumbles, I think. But I don't want to just open up the EPS in Photoshop. If I do that, you'll see what happens. So if I open the EPS in Photoshop, it recognizes that it's a vector file. And so immediately upon opening is going to ask me to turn it into a raster file. It's going to say, what size do you want? What resolution? And what mode, right? And I can put any size, any resolution I like. I could put 6,000 resolution here, and it would just become a huge file. But it turns it into a regular layer, and that is not what I want. So if I zoom in on it, you'll see the resolution. Not great. So instead, of opening up an EPS directly in Photoshop, what you do is you open up a new file in Photoshop that you make the resolution you want. So I'm going to call this car. Okay, so I have this new file in Photoshop. I'm going to set it to be print resolution. So this is how you make vectors print ready. From that one EPS file, I can print it at any size I want. It can go on the side of a truck. It can go on a billboard. It can go on a mouse pad. It can go on stationary. I want it to fit within an 8 by 10 mat so that I can put it in my portfolio, put a mat around it, hang it up in the gallery. And I want its resolution to be our standard lab resolution, which is 350 pixels per inch. I want the background to be white. I'm just creating a brand new Photoshop space, which basically gives me an 8 by 10 rectangle at 350 pixels per inch, just a background layer. Now I can drag and drop my EPS file onto that. 
and it will come in as a smart object. So I can place it with the transform box. This is how you make things print ready. I can center it. I want you to think about this black space around it as your black mat. And then this is the eight by 10 window in the mat. And I hit return and there it is. Now I can do that with other files as well. But if I try to bring in the SVG that I got, that I downloaded from Vector, notice it won't go in. So that's why an EPS file is helpful from Illustrator. If I bring in a PNG, like this one from Vector, it will come in. But notice, if I make it match, there's a big difference in the quality. Not quite as bad as the preview is making it look. But let's look at the difference. So this is the one brought in as a PNG. And then look how that would print. And this is just 8 by 10 inches at lab resolution. So that's why a PNG is not the best. Any raster file is not going to be the best. Instead, you want the cleanliness of the EPS that can be scaled up to any resolution. So hopefully that makes sense. Those are some of the advantages of the vector program, the Illustrator program, over the vector program. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'll delete that PNG. And because it stays as a smart object, remember, I could change this to a 16 by 20 poster. I could change it to a billboard size. And that one EPS file will always be perfectly clean, no matter the resolution. Oh, and then how do you add effects, right? Just like we did uh, last class using PhotoP, we can add effects through layer styles in Photoshop. So just to show you them clearly, I'm going to fill a new background with middle gray. Oh, and that shows me something that I didn't realize. That I need to fix in my EPS. So it shows me that there is white still included in this EPS file. Haha. -ha. So I can show you how we can get rid of that. But anyway, um, then I can simply go to the EPS, I can double click on the layer, and I can turn on a stroke, make it white. To, to give an offset, make it just big enough to make sense. And then I can give it a drop shadow as well. And I can, to make it match the one in PhotoP, I can sharpen the drop shadow and make it a little bit more directional. make it darker as well. OK, and then let's see what that looks like on white. So it's a problem to have those whites there. And the problem with the smart object is I can't erase from it, right? I can't select that white space and delete it because it's not directly editable. So I'd have to uh, duplicate it and rasterize it in order to be able to delete from that. And that would be perfectly clean and it would look good, but better to have a clean EPS. So I'm going to go back to Illustrator. I'm going to open up my EPS with Illustrator because everything is editable. And then I need to find the white. Now, one way to do that, this is something weird in Illustrator. It always opens with an artboard. 
And that's why uh, the files are all saving with the empty space, even though I don't even have my sketch in this file. So the artboard doesn't really mean anything. That's only, it only matters if you print out of Illustrator, which no one usually does. So instead, what I want to do is I want to select everything, and I'm going to move it off of the artboard onto the gray. So I'm going to compress all my layers here just so they're easy to select. Unlock them all. Hold down Shift and select them all. Things that are visible and invisible. Then I'm going to move it to the gray. I can even move it way off. All right. So now, that's really weird that it's saved with white because it's not showing that here. You know why it is? Is because each of these is still a stroke. Do you see that? It brought over the stroke from a vector whereas this is an outline shape. So before you save it as an EPS, what you want to do is make sure that you go to Object, Path, and Outline All Strokes. So that they are solid shapes instead of strokes with um, all right, so now if I save, save it, write the EPS format. There it is. I can close Illustrator, open Photoshop up, bring that EPS format in. It's going to come in over the top. I'm going to make it bigger. This is how you make a vector print ready. If we were still meeting in the classroom, I would require all of you to make at least one of your vector logos print ready for the critique. But I'm not going to require that this semester. That's a bit of a rush. Either your color one or your black one, just so you got experience doing exactly what I'm showing. And if we get back in the classroom, we'll have the chance to do it this semester still. Okay, so if I place it, now what I can do, this is a nice trick. Ah, it's still white in there. I am baffled. Huh. So it must be something turned on. It's not showing here. Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and delete these. You can drag them down to the trash, paths you know you don't want. So I have this one group that's still white. Just all empty white brought over from Vector. So I'm going to delete that. I think that should do it, because everything's a black path here. Everything's a, a black path here. Everything's a black path there. So that should be it. If that doesn't do it, I'm not sure what's going on. But Illustrator still confuses me sometimes, especially working between different programs. Okay, so let's close it. Let's bring that new EPS. Oh, that's a good sign that it centered itself. And let's bring it back in. And as a professional graphic designer, you have to do this a lot working with printers, like making sure your file is fully clean so that it works. And it still has that white. What am I missing? So weird. Yeah, so that might be an artifact from coming from the vector program. So the last thing, if, if this was happening to you, this is what I would have you do. Because sometimes you have to like scrub artifacts from other programs. But this is more like an IT kind of thing, like turn off your computer.